After Effects is a very powerful program. But if you don't know how to do a blue screen key, everything here looks just like this. Yeah, hello and welcome to this Guru lesson. And today what I want to show you is how to work with blue screen footage and also how to work with nested compositions. And so we start, we have here some images for our background and we have here our blue screen footage. And I just take it and drag it into a new composition. And here it is with my mouse reel, I scroll in a bit. And yeah, this is a footage. And when working with blue screens, there's one thing that is really, really essential. And this is take care that your blue screen is well lit. Yeah, you need really a really even lighting where the color is almost everywhere, almost the same. Yeah, you can see here, this is really uh, almost like uh, I've filled this with one solid color or so, yeah. Um, it's not by accident that I filmed this outside in the garden. So one cheap way to get a good lighting is to film it outside at a day that is a bit cloudy, such that you have very even sunlight without uh, shadows and highlights and all of this. Yeah, And then you get a good blue screen color, which is really, really essential. If you have not an evenly lit blue screen that has some shadow parts and some lighter parts, then you won't have any fun uh, doing the post-production in After Effects. The second aspect is try to make your, try to avoid blue screen wherever possible. Yeah. So imagine you are uh, filming a scene where you are, you want to be placed in front of some castle. Yeah, and you have a nice picture of this castle and you can think, okay, with blue screen, all of this is very easy. I put myself in front of the blue screen, key me out and place me in front of the castle. But the other option would be maybe somewhere in a place nearby, you find a wall that looks pretty much the same as an old castle wall. Yeah, and then you can place yourself in front of this original uh, existing wall, get nice shadows on the wall and all you need, and then simply cut this um, this wall with masks and you don't need any blue screen at all uh, and integrate this in your uh, background image. Yeah, and this will be much easier and probably much more realistic. So this is basically what we do here in the lower part. Here you can see that the blue screen only covers my top part and in the lower part we have some background that we are actually using inside our scene. And this is the easier thing to do. Yeah, it's easier to just cut out such a thing with masks and integrate it in the background than doing the blue screen key, which has some problems with if it's not perfectly lit, it's difficult. And also it's like every blue screen is uh, essentially also a light source. Yeah, if you have light falling on the screen, the screen is going to reflect the light and here this is not very much but in principle all areas surrounding the screen will get a little bit of blue light which is difficult to remove later and which also might make it difficult uh, to get re really realistic. Therefore only blue screens where they are necessary. They are usually necessary if you have moving objects like me here in, in, in front of some background. Huh? But now let's first start with the easy part. By the way, I pushed the space bar here in order to be able to move my footage. And I first want to set here a mask. So I click here. Oh, I have currently a Roto Bezier enabled. I'm going to disable that. And now I set here a mask around the area that I want to use. I'm not going to describe this in detail as you've already learned about masks in a previous Guru lesson. Okay, and now we have our clip and the only part that is left to remove is this blue area here. And for this we are going to use a keying plugin that already is uh, integrated in After Effects, that ships with After Effects, and this is Keylight, which works in general very well. So we drag it onto our footage. And then the main thing we need to do is to click on the screen color and choose a color from your screen. If your screen has not exactly precisely only one color, then you can try different regions and see which one works best. Here you can see the result looks 
initially already almost perfect. Yeah, If I set this background here to transparent, you see it looks like the background has already disappeared completely. But if I disable my masks, you can still see here some kind of borders, which indicates that hmm, in these regions it seems that the background didn't co disappear completely. Yeah? And now it's very tempting to say just play around with all these different settings of key lights and there are plenty of options actually. Uh, but the point is, if you just play around with these, it's unlikely that you get a really good key. Yeah, it's very easy to get poor keys and in order to get a good key, you should learn to apply or to, to experiment with these settings in a certain order. And the first and most important thing is when you try to experiment with your settings, don't necessarily look always at the final result, but choose here status. What status tells you, it, it it's like a very nice preview. It says everything that is not transparent at all is shown in white. Yeah, Everything that is completely transparent is shown in black. And everything that is semi-transparent, that is only partially transparent, is shown in gray. And you can see that the foreground is already perfect, yeah, everything white as it should be, but the background is not yet perfect because it's just only few parts are completely transparent and all these areas have still some noise in it that is not completely keyed out. And uh, the, the first and most important thing is before you play with any other parameters, be sure to pick the right color and then to play with screen gain and screen balance. I first want to try screen balance and you can see with zero it's looking like this. With 100 it's a bit better, yeah, more areas get black. Something in the middle is also not so good. I usually try three values here, one very low, one very high and one in the middle. And since here it looks like the highest gives the best result, yeah, most of these areas that should be black are actually completely black. So I keep it at 100 or maybe it's almost 100, like 95. Yeah, Try 5%, 50 and 95 and pick the best one. The next thing to experiment with is then the screen gain. And this one we boost until the background is completely black. Yeah, And now we have exactly what we want. The foreground is completely white, the background is completely black and just here at the border you have a light gray line, yeah, which tells here are some pixels that are semi-transparent. And this is perfectly fine, yeah, because you shouldn't have here a very uh, abrupt border. So this is perfect. And we can go back to our final result. And this is now the final green screen or blue screen key, which looks um, really, really nice. And uh, by the way, I sometimes get the question, should I use a blue screen or a green screen? Um, Basically, this, this uh, doesn't matter, whatever is easier for you in general. If you have more lighter subjects uh, to film, yeah, uh, if you have humans, usually green is a bit better. Uh, if you have blue jeans, you should definitely try a green one. But if you have something greenish, then rather use a blue background. So pick whatever background makes the largest difference to your uh, foreground elements. Okay, um, now we have our key. And in case your green screen was not so perfectly lit like this one, yeah. so if playing with screen gain and screen balance alone doesn't give you perfect result, go into the screen mat section and try to use clip black and clip white. But don't really use them a lot. It, it, it's sometimes tempting. It looks like oh, everything disappears. Uh, so all the transparent elements get completely transparent and all the uh, opaque areas get completely opaque, but really just use as little as uh, possible from, from these. Yeah, change these values as little as possible, but change these before you start playing with uh, shrinking or growing the screen and uh, setting these uh, parameters here. Yeah? So first use these here and set them as good as possible. And once these are optimal, try clip black and clip white. Maybe if you have uh, low resolution footage uh, or heavily compressed footage, you can also play with screen pre-blur. Pre but I wouldn't really touch any of the other parameters because this in general only makes your result worse. Okay, now we have our blue screen. And now we want to insert this or integrate this in our background. And instead of continuing in this composition, yeah, 
we leave this composition here as it is and create a new composition. This time we take our background image and drag it onto this icon to get a new composition. And here we have now our still image in the background. And then I take second image of the temple that I've prepared. So here's our temple. And then I take, uh, I mean, I could take now our blue screen footage here and drag it here in the composition. And then we have our original footage without the key, but this is not what I want. Therefore I delete it again, pressing the delete key. But instead I take the composition we prepared before and drag it inside this composition. And this means you get this composition that we have here. We are like the final result of this composition. You have now as a layer inside of this composition and you can use it as if it were a normal layer, although in fact it's a composition. And this is uh, maybe at the beginning a bit a strange concept, but it's very useful in, uh, usually yeah, to, to structure your um, your project. So it's like inside this composition, you don't have this blue screen effect anymore, don't have to take care of it, you just get the final result. And if you want to change the details of the blue screen key, you can go back to this composition here and do the changes here and then automatically all changes are transferred also here. Okay, so we can click S to reveal the scale and scale this layer down and move me right on top of this image where, where it belongs. Uh, maybe this can be fine-tuned a bit like this. Now it's not really realistic yet because these pillars here yeah, are, are missing. They should be somehow in front of uh, the blue screen layer. And to do this, you could duplicate this element here, control D, the temple and move it in front and then add some masks. Yeah, say we, I drew this really roughly just like here, like this. And now you can see this copy of the temple is in front. Yeah, and of course, obviously you should make these masks a bit more precise, but I have something different. I delete this layer here again, because what I have prepared is I've prepared a copy of this uh, image in Photoshop and drag it on top. And if we click on this icon, we see only this layer, we solo it. And you can see in Photoshop, I've isolated only these pillars here and only saved them as one image. And this is maybe a bit more convenient than, do than doing this with masks inside After Effects because really in Photoshop isolating such elements is much easier. Okay, now um, we have the basic composite done. Yeah, So the green screen or blue screen footage is nicely integrated in our scene. And what is missing is some color correction. And what I observe here is that the temple and the blue screen layer uh, and of course the pillars here in front also are much lighter than the background. Yeah? So what I want to uh, do is some color correction, but not on the entire clip, but only on these three layers. If you remember in the last Guru lesson, we discussed the curves effect with which we can do these color corrections. And with the curves effect, now the problem is either we apply it on an adjustment layer, which means it affects all layers below the adjustment layer. Yeah, this, this would mean if we put the adjustment layer on top, it would influence the temple and the foreground, what we want, but also the background. And this is what we want to avoid. And the other option would be to place one color correction on this layer, on this layer, and on this layer, and make them all identical. But this is also somehow a bit complicated. I don't want to have three copies of an effect. This is really not, not very handy. Yeah, and what we therefore do is we use a trick. We select all these three layers that we want to modify uh, together yeah, and go on layer and go to pre-compose. This is the very last entry here in this menu, although you can't see it anymore. Layer pre-compose. And now we call this here uh, foreground. And you will note that if I click OK, these three layers will disappear and will be replaced by one new layer called foreground. Uh, and now we have here this foreground layer and we have here a new composition foreground. Yeah? And if we open it by double clicking, you can see inside this foreground layer, we have now these three layers that we had before, our temple, the blue screen and the pillars in front. Yeah? And so in other words, we moved these three layers in a separate composition 
And the nice thing about this is that we can now apply to this layer that represents this composition um, our color correction. Yeah, meaning instead of having to apply a color correction to each of these three layers separately, we simply moved them in a composition and now apply the color correction to this composition. And this is a point where nesting compositions really makes sense. Yeah? So we have here what is called a pre-comp and this pre-comp allows to apply effects to all the layers in this or to the final result, so to speak, of all these layers together instead of applying the effect to each of them separately. I'm going to choose a levels effect, drag it onto the composition or actually I'd rather I delete it again. I think I do it with curves since I've explained you the curves effect already in the last tutorial. So now you can simply make this here darker and you can see uh, all the foreground elements here. So, uh, let's make this very heavily visible. So all the foreground elements are color corrected but the background is not. Very nice. Okay, um, maybe we do it like this and maybe we can also color correct individual channels. So maybe this is a little bit too much of red. Oops, I just want to grab this point and lower it a bit. And maybe it's also a bit too much blue. So we take the blue channel and also lower it a bit. And also maybe this is a bit too saturated. So I'm also going to add some um, hue and saturation effect on the foreground and just lower the master saturation a bit. Maybe like this. Okay, this looks already nicely integrated in the background now. I want to show you one more thing here and this is if we go to the foreground maybe we notice that uh, we want still to modify only the color of this blue screen. Yeah, So we want to uh, apply a curves color correction to the blue screen layer to make it maybe a bit lighter or darker and we want to preview what the final result of the color is in our main composition here. Yeah? So while we are working in this composition we want to see how does it affect this composition here. And you can do this by going here in your composition view with our main composition open to new comp viewer. And what this does is, whoops, I disappeared, here I am. It opens a second composition and let me make here some more space. And you can see this one is now locked, which means when I go here back to the foreground, this one stays at the background, yeah, because this one is locked. This one is not locked, so therefore this one changes with whatever composition I go to. But this one always shows me now the main composition and now I can work in this composition and adjust here um, the colors of individual layers and you can see also in the main composition you have an immediate update of what is happening. So this is very nice if you work with uh, nested compositions you can also also preview how the if how the, they affect or whatever you change uh, affects other compositions that they are nested in too. Yeah, that's it already for this Guru lesson. I hope you enjoyed it and I'm looking forward to see you in the next lesson.